I've never run a process like that before. Hello. Could I repeat the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, before before lunch, we did the um, skewering the spine, and you looked at the person, and then you felt the person, and then you felt yourself how you responded, and then you did the ATM, and then you came back to it. How was that process for you? Did it uh, did it change anything about how you perceived yourself, the other person? And I'm not looking for a correct response. I'm just wanting to know. Um, yeah, no, I'd, a big difference between um, the first time and the second time. Um, just the softness um, uh -huh. as the holder, just that the softness that I could feel in myself um, allowed a, a more flow of the movement. Um, I did change my body organisation too, so mm. it was interesting. I sort of without you having to think about changing. No, I think um, I, I think it just felt better if I if I did it a different way. Right, it right. Sort of just felt different in my body. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so the, you took you uh, something about it. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, coinciding of nodding of heads between. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, so, yeah, so we did it together, and. Um, uh, so Gloria went first, and and then and then I went second. So she was um, uh, watching me and then holding my head. And as uh, she said, because she got into a certain position, she was actually cradling my head off the ground. And as I did, so I encourage anybody else who didn't do this to do this because it's really pleasant. Um, because my head was off the ground and therefore there was no friction. When I moved backwards, it was just this really fantastic swaying of uh -huh. my head back and forth. It was extremely pleasant because there was no there was no feedback coming from mm. my head, head at that point. But of course, I could sense the movement up through my body, but in a really pleasant and sort of soft kind of a way. And then I had to go, having worked that out, I ha had to go at suspending Gloria's head, oh. I suppose, as well. Oh, and, so you and, shared and your experience back. Nice. Great. Cool. I was working with Narayan and in the role of holding Narayan's head, for myself, I think after having done the ATM with you, just more sensitive, more receptive. Mm -hmm. That's it. Cool. Okay. Well, I think we both found that just putting our hands on each other's heads almost brought a an expectation that we would do something in a certain way too, but I feel that my, when I was holding Angela's head, my organisation wasn't good and it was affecting her movement. Did you say that was right? Yes. Oh, a bit closer? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Each the box. That's all. It was, just, it was just my observation of myself. Uh-huh. That so you noticed that you there was some kind of interference happening. I felt that there was. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Did yeah. you? Okay. So that's and a knowing of a certain kind. Yeah. 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 All right. So. Good. Anybody from this side of the room? <laughs> you know, you don't have to. I'm just going. Uh, this is a bit uh, spatio centric. <laughs> I noticed uh, at the end, uh, Sue's movement was there was. It was more subtle, but it was, I, when we were talking afterwards, I was like, I could tell it felt like she was allowing the movement to happen and to oh. move throughout her body rather than I am doing this movement to show you I'm doing, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a qualitative difference. Yeah. Yes. It was a lot more subtle. Uh, and then the breathing, when they started to somehow, I managed to sync my breathing to her breathing and that changed it as well. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's good. Time. That's good. Okay. You want to give the box to me? I get to check it at people now. Oh. I noticed after doing the ATM that my movement was much smoother rather than it was quite uh -huh. jerky before. And I'm a real head like. Yeah. I was at the end and she said head slider. So it was really different. <laughs> the slide, because I can't make a slide happen unless, well, not that you're trying to, but yeah, yeah. unless the movement's fast, I've got a tiny bit of slide. 
but I felt I actually, I don't know if I had my hands, you know, not that there's a right place, but it felt like if I actually just put my hands kind of flat, it just allowed her, I felt like some, I don't know, if Emma didn't say it, I don't think she's here to comment. Oh, there she is. I'm not sure if I, if I felt maybe a little bit like my hands were limiting or maybe in the way of the movement, but if I had them flatter, it was just kind of like okay. just sliding on the surface of my hand. Well, that's a, once again, it's a good distinction to make, yes? Like, uh, oh, she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's a good distinction to make, that you realize that something, uh, something was you're not sure about, you know? The organization is a little bit different. Something that you can inquire more into. That's good. Yeah. Helen. Well, I was absolutely astonished. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. That's a good segue. Yes, well, you're astonished about that. At doing the movement after the ATM, that um, doing that, the breathing pattern with the movement actually... I could actually do it and it helped the move, it made the movement more fluid. Whereas and it was the first and only time doing that movement that I could actually sustain that breathing pattern and not feel breathless. Okay. Good. Good. <laughs> She's not here. Yes. Anybody else? I was just looking for my colleague. She. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> I heard clickling over there. I'm thinking, well, is she there? <laughs> Hi, Jenny. Uh -huh. Anything else? So one of the, um, one of the skills, and this is, uh, this is one of Jenny's strengths, is uh, knowing how to invite others to give you feedback about what you're doing, how you're doing it, and anything else you want to know about. And it's, it's, quite, a, it's quite a craft and a skill, and it needs developing. So Jenny will take you on this first part of the journey about how to elicit and what types of feedback you could ask for. Yeah. So I'll hand over to Jenny and thank you very much for responding to my question about what you, your experiences of that. <laughs> Just to fool you. <laughs> no, you're the tall one, I'm the short one. Okay, so last week you might recall Susan making the comment that we kind of felt redundant as teachers because you're doing such a great job of learning with each other. And so I thought it might be really useful to, to ask you, what was it that was working? You spent quite a lot of time in small groups. Um, you know, you had your task of, of teaching bits of lessons to each other. And there seemed to be um, animated discussion going on and people seemed to be making some comments that um, the experience had been helpful. Were we, were we right or were you all just kind of being polite to each other? <laughs> Anyone comment on, on that experience of working in small groups? We had the... Yep. Can you check the box over? Okay. Um, I found it very refreshing because I, I like I like the fact that we can say something to somebody in a way that gives someone feedback or someone gives you feedback and it's mm -hmm. not at all a judgment, that's just feedback. And so I think I just like the honesty that goes with it. There's nothing, there's so no... Can, can you think of any examples of a scenario where somebody was able to say something in a way that you found useful? Uh, actually, I can think specifically of Philippa. 
Mm -hmm. Sorry, Philip, for the dob you in. No, no. After we did our presentation last week, Philip yep. came and said to me, that was great. And the AT, little ATM at the end was good, but your volume wasn't great. You know, you were too soft. You're a little bit, you know, you need to project your voice a bit more. Exactly. <laughs> Which is probably not, you know, I probably am toning it down a bit because I probably am a bit noisy sometimes. Okay. So it was interesting just to get that feedback because I thought I was way too loud because I'm always being told I'm too loud. So, yeah. So that was, it was interesting to get that feedback because, again, I think that's part of your self-image as well. You've got this fixed self-image and yep. the, the feedback helps to kind of just readjust all that as well. So that was just some kind of factual information about your volume yeah. that allowed you to, to reference yourself yeah. for yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, um, Alison. Um, our small group, so the small group ATM yeah. group, um, uh, that was uh, that was great, and there was a variety of forms the feedback took. Sometimes it was almost a kind of a bodily feedback. In other words, you would see what people were doing, and then yes. and that could give you some feedback, which was great. Uh, one of the things that was um, uh, an interesting aspect, uh, and uh, uh, be interested in other people's comments, is um, we uh, we as a group, I think, and certainly as an individual, flipped between um, that thing that I guess I've struggled with since the beginning of this segment, which is, am I now, I need to have two minds almost. Like I can, what did you say yesterday? You can just do this ATM. <laughs> no, it's you just experience this ATM, as opposed to also starting about the, thinking about the ATM from the point of view of prospectively yep. being a teacher of it. And so when we were doing our small group, things sometimes we wondered with each other whether uh, you should do the ATM having just done the ATM if you see what I mean in other words knowingly in a way or should you try to do it absolutely following the instructions of the person <laughs> so when they say use your left hand and they really mean the right you don't use your right because yeah. they'll work out that they said the wrong thing but as if you are somebody who hasn't done an ATM before or isn't familiar with a method or anything like that. And, and so it's an interesting thing to go between those. And I guess having you and Zoran and Susan and Ruth, you act as guides for us, giving clarity, if you like, between those different modes in a way that's a little bit harder with one another because we're all struggling. Well, I'll just speak for myself, struggling with what kind of feedback am I giving? Am I giving yeah. feedback as a, somebody who's got at least some glancing familiarity with the Feldenkrais method, or am I giving it as a member of the public, mm. as a co-learner, you know, as well? Yep. So. Okay, now that's a really, really important point that often we're not entirely clear on our intention. What, what is my intention uh, as the teacher? What is my intention in terms of me being a student teacher, what am I practicing today? What would I like to get feedback about? Um, because if, if we're not clear, and then of course, there's, there's you as the student on the floor, are you there as, as yourself, um, noticing your own experience? Are you there as a colleague who's practicing listening to this person, as you say, and doing exactly what they tell you so that they get the opportunity to get the feedback themselves by watching what people do in response to what they say? Um, or, or is it some other kind of mix? And so that's probably, for me, one of the really critical elements for feedback to be useful and effective is for all, for all of us to get clear on what are we trying to do here? Uh, and so intention is probably one of the, the kind of hooks that we want to, to hang some of these things on. So any other thoughts or observations about what was helpful in the group, what, what, um, what allowed you to, to have a learning experience? Um, one thing I found very helpful is that every challenge, confusion, frustration or difficulty that I've had so far in the training during all our group work. I've met at least 
one person who's shared a similar <laughs> challenge, yep. frustration or difficulty and people who've had challenges that I haven't had. And there's been a conversation about that. And that's helpful, A, because you're seeing your challenge from someone else's perspective and B, because you're not alone. You're not a freak. Yep. You're not the only one who doesn't have a clue. <laughs> Yes, it's good to have friends. Anything else? Following on from that, though, I think um, that the certain vulnerability that we as students have accepted to um, partake in, we are not judging ourselves, we're being kind to ourselves. So we're actually, um, you know, we're, we're open to feedback and to take that on board without taking offence to it, if I can put it like that. Like we're very open with one another. And I think that that assists because mm -hmm. if you're too protective and you don't take it in the spirit that it's like the constructive feedback given, so. Um, the feedback brought home to me again, just how wide a range there is of what people prefer in uh, receiving an ATM, how much instruction, um, how little instruction or, you know, and the speed of change of movement um, and similarly more or less noticing instructions and commentary. I know. Didn't, didn't flinch you so really. um, I think the, in the, the small groups, for me, it was really nice to be able to have a point of difference and have a, allow that point of difference to be explored because um, so often outside perhaps this environment or to create that kind of environment where difference of opinion is valued um, it's, it's very difficult to create that environment and the small groups are really really great for that because there was there were so many different points of view but there was within that small group that opportunity to really nut out you know it, to disagree with each other and and have an opportunity to maybe be able to actually see somebody else's point of view. And I think that was really good. So do you have any sense of what kind of made that possible? How, well, how come in that group you could disagree and mm -hmm. it was okay, but other places it's not? It's partly what um, everyone said. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, there's a there's a understanding that perhaps criticism or difference is not a personal attack. Yeah. That it's that um, criticism is not personal. It's about exploring an idea, and that's really refreshing. Okay. Um, that that openness and the willingness and a willingness to actually hear what's been said rather than being a resistant or immediately reactive so that maybe that's part of the the um the, the atm training is that you at, well i think i i think i have to hear it and wonder how i'm going to respond rather than go for the habitual whatever it is, and maybe the physical aspect of the ATM in responding like that helps with the dialogue. Okay, I don't, so, I don't so, know. I just, so you were all kind of had a, um, something slightly external to yourselves to talk about. You had the event and the mm. experience. Yes, yeah, so maybe, maybe the, the internal dialogue that, you, that is encouraged within an ATM. Okay actually begins to be part of how the dialogue happens in the small group. Uh-huh. I don't, I, I don't know. I'd only put that 
into a sentence just then, but <laughs> but it, it, I keep pointing at you because Emma, Emma and I have had lots of really interesting discussions about how to how do you have a an, how do you how do you disagree? How do you actually put a point across a point of view that may be challenging or or doing something like that, and then not being pushed aside or or, or dismissed mm. because you happen to have a difference of opinion. Yep. Yeah, similarly in our group, we had um, different styles, different approaches to ATM. Yep. And it reminded me, it actually came, it came really clear to me yesterday when Zoran was talking about different approaches of like whether you go through the anatomy approach or whether you go through an individual exploration approach or a... Um, uh, movement kind of approach and I think I think that was the richness of it um, to sort of get into somebody else's way of thinking and kind of go wow that's just so different to how I would have you know the kind of words that I would have used and then just you know realize that there are different approaches depending on the I suppose personality of the person but also the intention and where they see the lesson as more anatomical or as more movement based or as more an individual exploration. Mm. So just that, that was fascinating to me just to, to notice that uh, the diversity in the group. Yeah. Okay. Any other observations of what helped, what was useful in your experience last week? The climate that's been created for all of our shared experiences, that's what I would say, um, has been, without exception, um, supportive, non-judgmental, encouraging, uh, perhaps humorous at times, philosophical. Um, in other words, in that sort of environment, people trust generally people are willing to say something to experiment and you start to value what's happening in the room and the people so if you disagree then you approach that with a sensitivity that goes this is a meaningful topic but I by no means want to hurt you or our relationship in having this discussion so it's a respectful environment and an enjoyable and trusting environment that that withstands difference it's really important that as you're saying mm -hmm. it doesn't happen everywhere it's um and it's a learning environment so people are encouraged all those okay. things it's yeah. a it's a feldy feldy <laughs> principles being lived it's probably what i think yeah um somebody said something about you know the the approach that's being taken in the lesson Exactly. maybe carries through and we're, well, we're, we're certainly inviting a, an attitude of curiosity yes. rather than an attitude of, of judgment in ourselves and, and maybe that, well, and I'm sure that does influence the culture yeah. in, in which we're swimming. Well, the H-bomb would probably be dropped if, it, if it, we didn't. We talked about uh, felty principles but didn't <laughs> live them. We even words. cope with the idea of principles here. Sorry, what did you say? We even cope with the idea of principles. Um. Um, what I found useful, it was that we have four, uh, three roles. Mm -hmm. So swapping, uh, be the observer, because I'm always a student. So I think it was a, a good thing to have a, like, a little system. So we, one of us was a teacher, and uh, like Susan says, to teacher, I don't remember that. Um, two students and one observer. And but also other systems around, so you really have to focus and, and take attention to what is going on there, and um, using your voice, uh, walking around. So start to map a little bit what is going to be after by having a, a small group and not the tension that the teacher is not looking at you. So <laughs> you can, um, yeah, you can make it fun and, and not, yeah. That was really useful to have a little taste of being with a friends. A private place with yeah. friends. Yeah. yeah. Good. 
Um, I agree. <laughs> no, uh, it was very interesting how we need to jump into the ATM. Just, okay, we finished. Now you are going to do it. And we, we was last week preparing very accurately <laughs> the, the lesson three, and who, do this, yes. who do this part, who do the other part, mm -hmm. and preparing, preparing. And the week before, okay, just do it. And Kat was the first one to, to give us, and I said, wow, what a, <laughs> no, how, how, you need just to jump and do it and without many preparation and, and use the memory. And I said, oh, how can I do I, I have a terrible memory. I can't. <laughs> and I give my class in the second day. And fortunately, Susan put some <laughs> notes there. <laughs> That I, that I, I, and, and yet yeah, when, when, when my group said, okay, who wants to, I said, okay, I'm going. And, and I felt protect, e even mm -hmm. if I, 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 I was very nervous about jumping and, and giving a class that I didn't know very well. And uh, yeah, this is something that I, I was talking about with, I think with Gloria, how we approach our ATMs in different ways. And in some way, is, is this, this was a practice who allows us to improvise and not to follow a script. Yes. Um, I was um, comparing a small group feedback um, to feedback that is given and received in my workplace. And we do a lot of work with students um, and you know, giving them feedback and them giving us feedback and how do you best deliver feedback and the KISS model and the sandwich model and the <laughs> pros and cons of all of those. Yeah. And um, personally, I find, yeah, I found the feedback that we were giving each other in our small groups last week so much more valuable because I think there was a genuine interest from everyone and that combined with that respect um yeah was, was much better rather than kind of working off a structure or a script or the the do's and don'ts of feedback sure so feedback is a word that's to my mind pretty loosely used often um i think i think it originally kind of comes out of systems theory something like that um, so, have we got any sailors in the room? No? Yep. How do you get from here to there? At least you know that much, right? If we, if we think about where, where the kind of highest level of technology is employed, um, it's probably in weapon systems and spacecraft and um, high-tech um, things that fly. And one of the very interesting things I find out about that is that the whole design of the navigation system is, a, is based on errors. That it is impossible for any high-tech system to travel in an exactly straight line. It can't plot a course from here to there unless it goes off course to get what Zoran was talking about this morning, that sense of comparison or difference between something. So, so the system is constantly kind of heading off towards where it thinks it wants to go uh, but it can only adjust and make corrections once the, the difference between the destination and where it measures it's currently heading is great enough that it can say, oops, I'm off course. And it makes a little adjustment and heads off in that direction and ends up zigzagging its way to precise locations. Now, somebody mentioned the feedback that you get by watching each other, by giving a, a direction, by asking a question, and watching what happens with the people in front of you. 
that to my mind is direct feedback. You, you say something, you observe, did it kind of get the outcome that I was expecting? Did they do the movement or go in the direction that I intended for them? It's pretty clear. Yep, no, sort of, maybe. Some of them, some of them didn't. And so from there, we're in a position to, to make an evaluation about whether I can now move on to the next instruction or do I need to find a different way of trying to evoke the response that I want? That's it's a fairly safe kind of feedback system as a rule. You know, people don't, don't usually leap up and do violent things when you give an ATM instruction. Um, they'll usually do their best or do something um, that allows you to adjust and, and move along in the direction that you want to go. So that's, that's feedback. The other form of feedback is something that, that we ask for. So this is some, the first I described is something we look for. We watch the people, we, we take that information in visually. Um, we, may, we may listen, um, we may have other, other forms of sensing. But the other, the other channel through which we get feedback is by asking for it. I think in my simple mind, when we ask a question, it means we sort of open a little pigeonhole in our brain that's ready to receive some information. And so if I've asked somebody, um, could, you, could you hear me speaking clearly? Was I speaking loud enough for you to, to hear me? Then I've opened a receptacle, receptacle that's ready to receive that information. I can store it where it's useful and then I can make an adjustment accordingly. If I ask uh, something that's less specific, um, I could ask something more open. So how was that for you? I could get all kinds of different responses that may or may not have somewhere to land. So the clearer I can be in my question for feedback, the easier it's going to be for me to, to receive it and use it, and probably the easier for you to be able to, to formulate an answer that's relevant. Um, sorry, I don't want to interrupt your flow, right. but the interesting thing about that is that um, sometimes you'll ask a question so that you'll get a kind of feedback. You know, it, it's safe to ask, was my voice loud enough? Yep. It's not much less safe to ask, you know, how was that for you or something? Sure. Um, and, uh, but, you know, and how sometimes you can, and maybe that's what those various methods you talked about, <laughs> sandwich, I don't know, is that giving someone a sandwich before they give it? Anyway, um, yeah, so how, how open you can be to the feedback, I yeah. suppose, is sometimes around the questions you're prepared to, ask, or the answers you're prepared to get, probably so. Sure. So, so in some of those workplace models, there's, uh, there's the idea that if I say something nice, slip in the, the bit that's not so nice, and then finish off with something nice, you'll cope. Um, maybe I just cope saying it to you. I'm not quite sure what the intention is. The question is, is it, is it useful? Does it help the person to make a change? There will be times when I want to ask a more open question and say, so how was that for you? If I can be a little, little more kind of focused, it might be useful. So um, can you tell me anything about your response to my tonality? Or can you tell me anything about the clarity of my instructions? Can you give me any examples that, that might help me learn something about giving instructions? Um, and so when we, when we come to the next couple of days when you start practicing teaching to each other in a more formal way, 
where you have gone through the preparation of what will I say, who's going to do what, how nervous can I get, you know, all those sorts of things. Um, then we want you to be able to have an experience that, that is helpful for your, your learning and your development. So if feedback is something that comes in response to a question, it's part of a communication loop, it's likely to be most useful if your responses are about your own experience. So um, when you were doing the scan, now I'm starting to open the box that says scan information. Um, you asked us to pay attention to about 17 different things within the space of a minute and I felt a, a bit overwhelmed and as though there wasn't time for me to really pay attention to any of them. That's got somewhere in my brain to, to store it. Um, I understand it was only your experience. I can ask somebody else, can you give me some feedback on the scan? And they might say, I'd never really thought of paying attention to the junction of my um, lower back and my sacrum, and I got fascinated by really paying attention to what was happening there. <laughs> now, this is the kind of variety of responses you're likely to get. Um, but I can still chuck that in the scan box and come back later and and sort those things out. And again, I understand that it's one person's experience and I can continue to gather information to check out, is this a kind of a general response? Was that a really clever thing to do and I should make sure I do it frequently? Or was that something that only one person felt, help, felt, it, felt it was helpful and other people felt that it was not so helpful? I might want to to modify how I do that next time. So if feedback can be in response to a question about my own experience and framed in a way that helps people make finer distinctions, get, get a clearer understanding of how things landed, what sort of options they might have, then there's, there's the possibility that that's going to be useful and people can take it on board and do something with it. Then there's a, what to my mind is a different category. Sometimes when we practice with each other, um, the practitioner, if you like, um, hasn't actually asked for feedback and is doing something that I would like to, ex to express an opinion about. To my mind, that is not feedback, it is information. And yet there are times when we need to give each other information in order for ourselves to stay safe. So if what you're doing to, with me, to me at the moment, doesn't feel safe or comfortable, I do need to to tell you, to protect me, and so that you have the opportunity to, to check out with other people, is this a, a general issue or is this um, idiosyncratic of, of this particular person? And so sometimes we need to think about how can we say things when we haven't been asked for feedback in a way that's useful? So have you had any experience of being in that sort of situation? Yeah, we did. You did? Um, Good. I did. Um, and it was really great because um, it was done with a uh, sense of curiosity and uh, like a noticing mm -hmm. and, and became like a whole conversation about... It was lifting the knee and it was um, just exactly where the fingers were placed, exactly where that was very specific, um, but it was noticing and then it was, was sort of 
what that felt like in me when I was lying down. And I was able to say, well, when you do that, it feels like I can feel the hinge of the knee. And when you do that, I can actually feel the, how the foot is landing on the ground. And so it was, it was fascinating. It became a really fascinating just to notice that every little alteration, every little thing made a difference to the experience. Yep. So it sounds as though that initially there wasn't feedback formally requested, mm. but it you was just somehow managed to fall into a, a conversation where you were both curious. Yeah, it was sort of it started off as just information, oh, that seems to be having that effect. Yep. And then it just blossomed from there. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Chuck the box over here. So somehow you must have each sensed the permission in each other to, to continue the conversation. Yep. My experience initially in our group, and it's only my experience, was that um, it, we, we had the tendency to offer feedback as we were going through the lesson, <laughs> which was not asked for. Right. <laughs> um, but it was interesting because I think it was, it's around timing I think probably just to let someone have a good go. And we did it naturally towards the end anyway, it's just yep. it, because, you know, people couldn't remember the lesson and so we were offering, oh, you did this and you did that next. And, but different things that I think there's timing around that kind of feedback too that yep. is important. Like if, because it can be just, it was actually, I think, disruptive for some people when they were trying to do their thing and having that constant input. Yep. You know, and I think we worked it out as a group naturally by the end anyway, but it happened more at the start and I found it disruptive personally, but other people might have found it good. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so sometimes timing is, well, always timing is, is important and sometimes what needs to be negotiated is, is now a good time to talk about this or perhaps we could talk about it later? So you've probably, I would guess, all had times when you're kind of, your head is so full or your, your emotions are so kind of active that you don't have that box in your brain open or receptive just at the moment. And so it is not helpful to have either feedback or information at that point. How might you deal with that, apart from burst into tears and run into the bathroom? Yes. I mean, that's always an option, but a couple of other ones might be useful. Are you asking me? Or well, room? you've got the box. Can you think of an example? or uh, Is anyone else? Well, uh, I actually just, I think I might have said at one stage, maybe it's not a good idea, but... Um, I don't know. Actually, I find it hard giving because it's like that's giving you have to you're kind of giving feedback, I guess, to that input. I actually find it a bit hard to do that, which is good why we're doing this structure because there's certain things that can easily feedback like tone of voice yeah. or, you know, um, volume or whatever. But certain things that are a bit more that people might take offence to, I tend not to say or give feedback. I think that's a very common trait amongst many of us that we don't want to upset each other because we do kind of have a, a genuine caring and respect. But sometimes if nothing is said, then we end up getting upset because we didn't say something and something uh, continued to happen when there could have been a choice. So if we find ourselves in those situations where something's not, not comfortable, not, not working for us at the moment, what would be some strategies that we might use? Or if somebody wants to give us feedback and we're not quite ready or available at the moment? I'll do a, a two throw. I would be just saying to somebody, hey, I've got some feedback. Is now a good time? That's a possibility. That, yeah, or, you know, can we, yeah, are you interested or not? Yep. Yeah, sometimes people just aren't yep. interested. 
you know. I mean, That's I'm, true. My husband never has his window open. So, <laughs> and he doesn't seem to appreciate my feedback. I really, I can't understand why. Right. We might have to do another session on how to get the windows open. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yep. Husband window. Um, yeah, I think, I think um, you know, just being honest about where you're at yourself and being able to just say, oh, look, you know, I'd love to hear that, but right now I'm just not in the headspace. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, just those kind yep. of words, find some words that... Could you hold that yeah, till... hold that thought till later or yep. something, you know. Um, because sometimes you are in a flow of something, especially if you are doing like an ATM thing and you're trying to give some instructions and then, you know, it's a thing of, well, just wait till the end and that would be great, yep. you know. Um, let me know that at the end or just, you know, yep. find some way of saying it like that, yeah. And most people would be okay, I would imagine, with that. Sure. Mm. Is there any other thoughts? Is it just about, are you asking about when you can't receive the feedback at the moment or in general? Uh, the question was kind of a bit muddled, I think. Um, it went in many directions. One is, what, what might you do if somebody's wanting to give you feedback and you don't want it right at the moment? Mm -hmm. or, or if you would like to pass on some information or some feedback to somebody else... Yeah. How so, might you approach it? With the, the latter, the approach I would take is to say I. And when you're talking about I like to do this or I have found or for me it's this, then yep. I don't find that people take offence because it's, it's a personal reflection. If they like the idea, they can take it. If not, then sure. they leave it. So I, yeah. think, I think that's usually pretty helpful is yeah. to make sure we own our opinions and our, our thoughts. And you're not necessarily foisting them on anybody else. You're just saying, this is what I do. Yep. Mm. Okay, so, so maybe we could kind of have a culture that says, uh, in general, we'll, we'll check in with each other as to whether you want my comment now at all or later. Uh, and we might encourage and remind each other to ask for feedback because it is it is valuable it is useful when we can share that space of curiosity as, as Gloria was describing so you know can you try your hand in a different spot because I can feel it here or I can feel it there it's not it's not really about you know does that feel nice or doesn't it feel nice it's it's that exploration of what happens that that can engage the curiosity of both of us. So when we, when we get to situations like the next couple of days where you'll be teaching, we will encourage you to think about what is it that you want to practice today? So we kind of narrow the field of all the possible things that you could be practicing and hence seeking feedback on and all the possible responses that the rest of us might have so that I might say um, today I'm practicing um, my timing I want to get a sense of you know how, what's an appropriate tempo to give the instructions at what's the timing to allow you the space to explore them how long do I need for the rests those sorts of things that's that's my kind of window of focus for myself. And it'd be helpful if you could kind of pay attention from that lens as well and give me some, um, some feedback about how, it, how it's affected you later on. We will look at some, some lists. You've already got some lists of things that you could pay attention to. Um, but hopefully that will, will help givers and receivers to, to really develop the skills in making use of each other because we are each other's most useful teachers in this context. And we hope that not only will that be something that you, you practice here and, and in your online stuff, but that it becomes a resource in the future once you're away from the group that, 
that you will have that kind of habit, if you like, of, of using your colleagues to help you with that ongoing learning process. Cool. This same environment doesn't always exist outside, but getting your skills polished up here will help you out there as well. <laughs> okay, so um, rather than generate a formal list, you already through uh, processes with Susan, i.e. the um, Job list of at attributes for a yep. Feldenkrais teacher, you already have an inkling of some of the elements. And instead of going for a formal list, determine for yourself something that you would really desire feedback on or information about, and let that be your topic for maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after. And then as we travel through the rest of this process of, you know, ATM teaching, we'll develop formal lists and that'll just kind of come out. Yep. So just decide for yourself and maybe we'll have some time at the end of today to get together in your teaching group and maybe discuss what it is that you'd like to know for yourself. Uh, and that will be a nice kind of lead in for tomorrow. Yeah, how does that sound? Yeah, appropriate? Yep, okay. Uh, I think that's, that's it. Okay. Uh, well, um, so based on that conversation, is there any place that, this, uh, for those of us who have not had all those feedback models, <laughs> is there any place that they can go to to brush up on this? The models? Yes being a model kind of person? <laughs> uh, well, I have the four key points that I can stick up on the wall. That'll be good. Um, uh, Kat might be able to um, remember. Hey. I mean, the, the, there are things like the sandwich of hit him with something nice and then something not nice and then something nice again but that that's not feedback that's opinions so. i'll give it to you i'm a little bit busted there you go. um i listened to an interesting podcast a few months ago um it's called the hidden brain podcast um and they did an episode on feedback um and it was by a person or a couple of people who had written a book called Thanks for Your Feedback. And one of the things that I found really interesting was them talking about the switch track um, reflex, or I guess it was about, you know, when perhaps when someone's not ready to receive feedback um, and they're given some they receive it in a different way to perhaps how it's intended and they switch tracks and it, and it, it's either throwing it back on someone like, well, that's your fault because what have you, or yeah, getting the topic completely wrong. Um, but it's an interesting podcast. Was that a recommended book or not? I haven't read the book. Oh, I only yeah. listened to the podcast <laughs> episode, short form. <laughs> Enjoy being a teacher. <laughs> Why is my microphone flying my way? Um, is that, you know, um, Jenny has spent years and years doing this kind of work, yes? Promoting this kind of understanding. And so the lovely thing is you get through Jenny a, dis a, a distilling of information that you'd have to sift through a lot of material for. And it's not just uh, us that have that. A lot of you in this room have studied fields and aspects that you'd spend a lot of time investing and sifting through and understanding. And then through talking with each one of you, you get this crystallization of understanding what that field is about. 
that's great. That saves a lot of time. It doesn't necessarily do what you call academic justice to the field, but it gives you enough information to work with and work by and through. And um, if I reflect on some of the talks that Moshe gives, this is what he says about his studies in physics. He says, I'm giving you stuff that you would have to do a whole physics course to go through and then you still might not get it. So each one of us has within us these, these, these gold mines of understandings and information and points of view that we can glean. And that's a wonderful thing in this kind of context. It, it, that's really rich, a really rich learning environment. So thank you, Jenny. Sorry, just one more thing that I would, would say, and that is if at any time when you're working with each other, you find yourself in a situation that is not okay for you, mm. you must give that information now. You don't need to say, look, perhaps tomorrow, if you're feeling in a better frame of mind, could we chat about the pressure that you have on my... <laughs> Yes, can we talk about that now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that is the kind of proviso that, that please do keep yourselves safe. Okay. So what we'll do, just have a water in, water out break, and we'll come back and uh, Ruth will guide you through another lesson. And uh, what's the time now?